Hello everyone. Today in this video, I want to show you how you can create Azure function uh, on top of Azure Graph API to retrieve a, uh, Azure ADB 2C user and uh, return it to a consumer application. Uh, but first, let's have a look at this diagram to give you a bit of context around what we want to do. And the uh, next step, why would you need to use this architecture? Uh, as you see in the left side of the diagram, we've got the consumer apps. It might be a mobile application, web application, SBA application, or anything like that. We create a HTTP trigger function app, uh, which is basically like a RESTful API. You can implement your RESTful API layers using Azure Function App with HTTP trigger. And in the Function App, we call Graph API uh, to grab a user out of a, uh, ADB2C and then return it uh, to the uh, Function App and then from there to the Consumer App. Uh, but the question here is, uh, you can call this Graph API directly from mobile application or web application, why would you need to create a, a extra layer or a kind of wrapper on top of Azure Graph API? To answer this question, uh, I would say if you want to do an operation, which is a kind of batch and it needs uh, multiple uh, call to the Graph API, if you want to do that from consumer application, the error handling might be a nightmare. It's not easy to do error handling, so it's easier to put everything in one uh, API method, in this case, the, in the function app that we have. And then uh, from a consumer app perspective, it calls uh, API method. Uh, if it is successful, it goes with the uh, success scenario. If it fails, it goes with the error scenario. Uh, so, for example, if you want to add an extension attribute, if it doesn't exist, and then create a user and then set the extension attribute based on condition one and condition two, and so on and so forth. Uh, instead of doing all of these uh, tasks one by one by different Graph API call in the consumer app, we wrap it in a, a function app and then just call it from the consumer application. It's easier for error handling and for everything else. Okay, let's get it started. I go to the Visual Studio and create a new project. In the create a new project template, we pick up the Azure function template, click next, give it a name, Azure Graph API, and then click on Create. We want to create a HTTP trigger function. So we highlight HTTP trigger and just click on Create. OK, it creates a function app with HTTP trigger template project for us. Uh, First of all, just add a new class and call it constants. To make this video quicker, I just copy and paste the code and quickly explain it to you. What's going on. Uh, I've got a constants class here with four different property, one for application ID, tenant ID, client secret, and tenant name. Uh, we need to create an app registration in the Azure portal and then uh, grab that values from there and store it in this class. And then we use this uh, constants value uh, in our code. Uh, to call the Graph API. So uh, let's jump to the Azure portal. 
go to the app registrations new registration name it demo app account in this organization directory only and just click on register copy the client id you paste it to application id we need tenant id copy that paste it here we need a secret go to the certificate and secrets create a new client secret enter a name demo app secret one and 24 month add copy the value paste it in the client secret and the tenant name that I have here is OZAP Builder so I put my ETC tenant name here as well save it uh, come back to the function before doing anything here just come back to the Azure portal we go to the authentication sorry to the API permissions uh, we need to add API permission for this app registration so click on add a permission choose Microsoft Graph and make sure you select application permissions not delegated permissions and then look for user user tick user dot read write all and click on add permission and then you need to click on grant admin consent for default directory and click on yes excellent now we've got this permission for our app registration which allows us to read and write uh, user data uh, using graph api so we are pretty much done with the app registration come back to the function app uh, first of all before adding any code here we need to add some new get packages so right click on the solution go to manage new get packages for the solution and go to browse uh, we need to add microsoft client identity add the latest version to the project next one is Microsoft Graph dot data to this one we install it Click on OK and accept license. It's installed. And the last package that we need is Microsoft Graph Auth. Installed. Here you go. All installed. Come back to the function. Uh, just add a new parameter here to get the username as a parameter here change the function name to something like get user and 
me just copy and paste the code again to make it quicker. For logging purposes, just log uh, that this function is called and then we display the uh, username parameter in the logger window. Next step. Again, I copy and paste the code. Just get rid of this. To using some identity client. Uh, we create an object from confidential client application builder. We need the app ID, tenant ID, and client secrets that we created in the app registration and we recorded the value in the constant class. Uh, we build that object and then we use graph service client. I don't know they're using the pass this object to that and then finally we can call the graph API. This is a synchronous call so we need to make this method async which is fine. In filter method we just need to write This comment, it says in the identities, if there is any issuer assigned ID equal to username and the issuer is our tenant name dot Microsoft, sorry, dot on Microsoft.com, then get that identity and store it in the user. Uh, what is it doing is uh, retrieving the user with the username that we passed to this function. And in the last bit, we just create a HTTP response and return the given name of the retrieved user. So to recap, we like that this function is called and what is the uh, parameter value. Then we create an object from confidential client application builder. We're using the app ID, tenant ID, and client secret that we uh, created uh, in, uh, from the app registration that we created in the Azure portal. Then we pass it to a graph service client. Uh, constructor and get a client uh, object and use that client object for uh, calling the uh, graph method and using the filter method with this syntax to uh, select a user from the Azure AD to see directory. Okay, let's run Azure function. Okay, now it's run and we've got the uh, get user endpoint here. So I'm gonna test this endpoint using Postman. So we go to the Postman, create a get request and put the API endpoint here. And in the parameters tab, you just need to add a username parameter and put a username that you already have in your B2C tenant. So if I click on send here, uh, maybe if we can see this window and we click. 
it says get user is called with this username and then function executed successfully come back here postman there you go we've got a status code of 200 which means okay and the display name is the user given name from uh, b2c see the given name that i've selected here we've got different attributes as well if you need anything else you can pick from this list or you can uh, serialize all the objects to a JSON file and return it to a consumer app. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and it was a useful video for you, please like and subscribe uh, to support us for making more videos. Thank you and bye.